What's up everybody, this is CJ. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be recapping the games I played in March. I'm also gonna be talking a little bit about a game that I am now obsessed with that has taken away a lot of my time from doing other things that I probably should be doing. Let's get to it, Dune Imperium Uprising. I always, always start with that one. I only got a couple of games of Dune Imperium Uprising in uh, this month and they were all for the Stoneburner Open. I've been pretty busy with family stuff, but also my computer died about halfway through the month and it just got re built while the um the power supply and the motherboard got fried so that's just something that happens and uh unfortunately it really impacted my uh virtual playing i played brass birmingham brass birmingham of course one of my favorite games uh played online with some of the hidden assets group and uh, tts club group and uh yeah it was good i still think it's very good i still like uh brass lancashire better but you know it's it's a thing that i i enjoy playing and i will always play brass birmingham uh, whenever anyone asks. I played three games of Brian Baru. Brian Baru has uh, has kind of like split my group. Like a couple of people love it and think it is a really brilliant design. And I'm one of those people. I think it's a great design. And then some of the people think it's just okay or aren't super into area control. And that's totally fine too. I just think it's, it's an interesting game. Um, but that is uh, Brian Baru. You are um, playing cards, kind of take, doing a trick taking. And then the person who wins the trick gets to control a space on the board. Um, if you uh, don't win the trick, then you get to perform an action on the card, which is almost as useful or sometimes more useful to do that. You have to balance those sorts of things because at the end of the game, controlling spaces gets you points and being in different regions gets you points. So very interesting game, uh, tense. And the more I play it, the more I like it. So Brian Boru. I had an epic Dune Gale Force 9 game where uh, we had a Fremen Harkonnen win. Uh, in this game I was playing as the Atreides and I ended up in an alliance with the Emperor um, which was pretty good um, and and the Emperor helped like basically you know bankroll me and, and, and get some good cards. I had the last gun I was about to like do some work but the Fremen and the Harkonnen and their treachery and their uh, very well-timed treachery cards, like basically I wasn't able to track all of their cards because one of them was secret and they had a duplicate of a card I did not know about. Or actually I did know about it and sort of like forgot to write it down. But that's my fault as the Atreides. But it was an epic game. It was really fun. And that was celebrating Dune 2's release beginning of March. And we, we did like this, we, we went and watched the movie, then we came back and played the game for like five and a half hours. So it was a blast, really, really fun. That is Dune. I played one game of Path of Civilization. Now Path of Civilization is an interesting game that uh, I, I don't know if I really liked it. <laughs> it was an interesting one. So essentially this is a very solitaire game where you are uh, you have these five cards and you're going to arrange them on your board and then at certain steps in the the round you're going to activate those cards uh, whether they have like bonuses on the left side of them or the right side of them either you get like immediate benefits or things you can cash in for things later on um, and you're you're basically leveling up these civilizations you're trying to get your civilization as um, as grand as it can be um, and what you're doing is taking these cubes that you're acquiring and then basically using them to purchase famous people or mon mon monuments and things like that. Then you're also using them to buy new technologies. And, and when you buy technologies, you get rewarded with more things and, and so on and so on. It's a kind of typical civilization game, but there's very little interaction whatsoever in it, which I think was the biggest problem with it. There, the only interaction you really have is in buying the like leaders and the monuments and on each player's pl uh, player board you have these six symbols so there's these six basic suits of um of things so there's like leaders there's monuments and various other things and if you uh want a specific monument or leader you have to make sure that you know someone who outranks you in that suit doesn't want it as well <laughs> which is what makes it very strange so you can go i really want this leader i really want einstein um and then someone else can go oh well, i've got a better ranking of that suit then i'll just take that from you and then you have to rethink your turn and so it's, it's kind of a simultaneous game we play mostly simultaneous in this game but i didn't find the simultaneous action selection sped up anything because it actually caused people to 
have to go, okay, well, now I can't get the thing I want. Now I have to rethink my whole action, my whole turn, um, or the whole round. So it was a weird one. I think the concepts were really cool. I mean, I like civilization games generally. I'm a big fan of civilization games, but if the civilization game starts to bog down in the minutia of in, in what order are we doing this or who can take what from whom so they can wait you can basically wait and see if somebody wants something and you can kind of strong arm that thing away from them and really hurt their game which i don't think is super fun i think that that was that's a little bit uh a little too take that uh for a game that is mostly solitaire it's a weird one so uh, Path of Civilization, one I, I probably won't play again, but it was uh, it was a fun play. Uh, all right, I played a game of Biblios. Biblios, uh, one of my favorite card games. I introduced it some, to some people, and they had a great time um, at a game night. And yeah, it was a good one. I, I have spoken about Biblios before. If you have not seen what this game is, go check it out on Board Game Geek. Um, it's just a very, very cool uh, set collection game that has some stock market-esque things going on that are very light, but generally there's a push your luck and then there's a, a bid, and the bid is my favorite part, the, the auction, excuse me, is my favorite part of the game. Uh, I played a Libertalia. Libertalia, uh, I didn't have a great time with Libertalia, though I don't think the game is particularly bad. I think that it, I had a bad time because Myself and one of the other players had a very similar strategy, but they had uh, they had one like basically this is a simultaneous action selection game. If you've not played it, it's a game where you uh, select from a crew of cards. You have this crew that are kind of like um, they're randomly determined, but then everyone has the same crew. And you're going to reveal which crew you're using for a turn for um, one of your journeys. And then they're going to be ranked along this board. And when they're ranked along this board, that determines the order of their action, their, their, the, when they take their action. And this is a big problem because if you, you, if you tie somebody, <laughs> then you get, uh, if they have a, a higher tiebreaker than you, then they will go up, up ahead of you. Um, and so what ended up happening in this game is I ended up doing the exact same strategy as another person across the table and thus lost all potential for winning the game because um what they did just they had the tiebreaker so they could do the thing and get the get the stuff before me you're basically trying to collect these little tokens these tokens are scoring points basically um and there's only a certain number of them uh each round so yeah it's okay i think it was a fun game i think libertalia i have played the original one which looks a little bit more like pirates this version i played the new stonemeyer uh remake and it was um like lighter but for the i mean lighter in tone the art is much nicer but at the same time i think the game is still really cutthroat and brutal and i don't think the the art really matches what you're doing in the game um there's also a lot of like like screwing people over and you have to like sometimes you have to kill somebody's uh character because you took um a saber and if you take a saber that's just what you do is you just screw somebody over and you're forced to do that. You, sometimes you have no options. So it's it's interesting. I, um, I'm i not sure I really will play this one again, but uh, maybe, maybe I will. Uh, we played it at five players. It was a little chaotic. And also the last round, I knew I was completely out of the game and nothing I could do could get me back into it. So it felt a little bit bad doing that. And it felt like it was over before it was over. All right. I played a game of Spots. Spots is a really interesting dice rolling game. Um, I, I quite like this one. So it's a very light. You're rolling dice and then you're putting the dice onto dogs and the, the pips are the spots on the dog. And you're trying to complete six dogs and the first person to complete six dogs wins or six cards of dogs. Some cards have multiple dogs on them. The interesting thing of this game is that there's actions and basically you have these uh, array of actions that are in the middle of the table and you choose an action, you flip it over and then no one can take that action until um, there's only one action left, I believe, and then you flip them all back over. So there's some interesting things going on with trying to complete and push your luck, the, the cards. If you complete all your cards on your turn, then you bank them basically for points, and then you can collect some new cards. The There's a little bit of interaction, not too much, but basically it's a solitary roll dice thing, and it's pretty light, and it was fun. I enjoyed it, so that was Spots. 
and I played Teach You. Uh, Teach You I played before, but I played it with a group that actually knew what they were doing, which was great. Um, it had been a little while since I played it, so I needed a couple of reminders, but this was a very fun... Oh, gosh. Teach You was, is one of those games that, while you're playing it, you're like, this is just such a smart game. And I, I might be trying to introduce this to, new, to some people soon, because Teach You was uh, one of the high points of that gaming night. So... I guess I should explain what this game is in case you've never played it. There is a version of the game or you can play it on Board Game Arena. Uh, Teach You is a hand shedder. Basically, you get dealt a hand of cards and trying to get rid of your cards as fast as possible. But you're playing in teams. The person across the table from you uh, is on your team and you're trying to help them out and you're trying to hurt the people to your left and right. At the beginning of each hand, you're going to pass a card across the table and pass a card to the left and to the right. So you're passing good cards to your teammate and passing bad cards to your opponents. But there's a lot of mind games that, that go in that. Um, and there's also some interesting um, play where you can try to, like if you have if you have a bomb, which is like four of a kind or a, a straight flush you, of five, you can play that at any time and win the trick immediately. I don't know how they do that on Board Game Arena because it is kind of like a you can do it at any time, literally on someone else's turn. So I wonder how that exactly works. Um, but anyway... The, uh, the game is really fun and trying to time it so that you can help your teammate go out and hopefully you go out second is really important. But if you can't, then try not to go out last. But great game, really fun, taking the right tricks, getting points, etc. You know, that's what you expect from um, a hand shutter, trick taker kind of game. It was a good one, teach you. All right, and the game that is keeping me from doing basically anything else this month has been uh, Star Wars Unlimited. Star Wars Unlimited is a new collectible card game from Fantasy Flight Games. I mentioned it last month, but I need to mention it again. This game is taking over my life in a way that's probably a little unhealthy. It's a very quick, I'd say like maybe 25 minute game for each game. Maybe a little bit quicker sometimes, maybe a little bit longer sometimes, depending. Of course, it is a um, it is a head to head battler. And it shares a lot of similarities with Lorcana. Uh, and it has like uh, you take cards from your hand and you put them down in Lord County, you put them in your inkwell and this one you put it you put them down in your resources it's basically the same thing um, and you're you know you've got all the characters from Star Wars and you're trying you have this deck of 50 cards and you're trying to um, attack and defeat the opponent's base so once you attack their base and, and do as much damage as needed usually 25 or 30 uh, damage then you win the game uh, but there are a lot of hiccups in this and trying to figure out both a deck that does this well and also how to pilot that deck is what makes this so satisfying. I have become obsessed with the deck building aspect of it. I've been collecting a lot of it and I've been playing it nonstop. Um, some online, some in per mostly in person, but some online. I have now a, meetly, a weekly meetup for <laughs> Star Wars Unlimited, which is um, sort of impacting my, my local uh, meetup for board games. Uh, as you can see from this month's game uh, recap. But the cool thing about Unlimited, and I think the strongest case for it for, as being like one of the most exciting card games that come out in a long time, is the leader system. The leader system is very smart, very, very smart system. Basically, you have one leader and a base. Your leader has a normal ability that they can use as an action, or maybe it's a passive ability that they can use during the game. Um, but when you reach a threshold of resources, you can deploy your leader once per game for free. And that leader then will, you know, be just like usually a really strong leader. Like Vader is huge and he does damage to other units when he attacks. Um, Luke gives shields to people, other things like that. You, you can kind of see how things happen um, as you as you build your deck and, and put your leaders in out and play and, and use them. But basically there it's interesting because you have this really big turn and all the leaders come out on different turns. Uh, some of them come out in the same turns, but most of them in different turns. And that makes it so that you have a really big swing turn where you can go, I play this this big thing, use all my, my resources, and then my leader comes out, which impacts the board. Now you have to deal with all of these things. So that sort of kink in the usual trading card game uh, uh, formula makes for a really exciting gameplay and trying to piece out where, you know, where when to deploy your leader because you can deploy them later you don't have to deploy them on that turn uh, or whether you're going to uh you know build up for another thing another play down the road is really interesting 
Um, it's an interesting puzzle and w the different matchups and the different types of, uh, of decks and leaders really affects how you play it and in some subtle ways. And yeah, so really, really big fan of this game. I think it is a huge hit and I cannot wait for the second set. I am totally, totally obsessed with it right now. So that is the recap, everybody. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to uh subscribe below you can get more notifications like this for this video or videos like this and for the stone burner open which is currently going on uh shadow and i are going to be covering that we've been covering a lot of them uh, he's been covering most of them but i have a couple coming up and then we also have uh, more videos the conley will be returning very shortly uh in short order and hopefully hopefully it will be uh bigger and grander than before so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video thank you all for watching uh, and you can support us on Patreon if you'd like to, patreon.com slash hiddenassets. And we'll see you next time. Take care.